So, as a person who enjoys patterns, one of my favorite things to do in my spare time is find an example of what I call the reverse flash. What I mean by the reverse flash is some sort of object or character that is to something else as the reverse flash is to regular flash, as in they are in some way seen as very similar to their rival, and are so associated with this rival to the point where most people only identify them by their rivalry, just as how the reverse flash is seen as just the flash's evil counterpart. If you want some other examples, think of the Punic Wars, where the ancient Carthaginian peoples have gone down in history as the enemies of Rome and not much else. Or maybe for a more layman's example, Pepsi to Coke. And in the paleontology world, the best example I can think of is the rivalry fought in the Cretaceous period between the carnivorous, short-armed, bone-crushing tyrannosaurs and the lesser-known but equally carnivorous, short-armed, bone-crushing abelosaurs. I can bet a few of you have never even heard of abelosaurs, and others might just look at these creatures as a cheap knockoff of the iconic tyrannosaurs. But the other trait of a good reverse flash is that they go much deeper than public perception. Similar to how reverse flash is an interesting villain despite his uncreative name. The Carthaginians were a unique and dominating people, whose legacy has only begun to be appreciated, and sorry, but Pepsi's better than Coke. Likewise, abelosaurs aren't just budget rexes, but instead an interesting group of predatory animals we now have some evidence of to truly appreciate how unique they are. Of course, we must actually get into the meat of the issue, which is what exactly makes an abelosaur? Well, abelosaurs are theropods first and foremost, and are unsurprisingly grouped into the taxonomic family Abelosauridae. These are further grouped into the clad Ceratosauria. Ceratosaurs are a confusing jumble of many different types of weird theropods, all of which are united by the fact that they are more closely related to the type species Ceratosaurus than they are to birds. This is opposed to the Tetanurans, who make up a massive majority of the other theropod species and whose numbers would eventually evolve into birds. Ceratosaurus itself was a large, predatory animal who lived many millions of years before the first abelosaurs, and it shares many traits with its descendants. It has a robust skull with a few display horns, and a set of somewhat wimpy arms. From these basal ancestors, what would become abelosaurs spread across the splitting supercontinent Gondwana. Gondwana essentially had all of the landmass of the southern hemisphere, made up of what is now Africa, South America, Australia, India, and Antarctica, and which would slowly break up during the time of the dinosaurs. Cretaceous Gondwana was a rough place to live. It contained many arid habitats that would be difficult for a large predator to survive in. The south was also home to many other dinosaurs who would have been tough competition for abelosaurs, such as the giant Carcharodontosaurs and the bizarre Spinosaurs. Yet by the end of the late Cretaceous, these other predators would disappear and the abelosaurids would be the only large predators left to dominate most of the southern hemisphere. This is once more opposed to the tyrannosaurs conquering of Asia and North America, which made up the northern hemisphere at the time. And as abelosaurs came to conquer the southern continents, they also got much weirder. Firstly, their skulls became very robust and deep, making them look somewhat like bulldogs. Their powerful jaws were further reinforced by strong neck muscles, it is believed these animals killed by latching onto prey with their bite, and simply not letting go, just like modern big cats. This over-reliance on their jaw left their arms to get weaker. Now, a T-Rex's arms are usually the butt of many jokes, and for good reason. But abelosaur arms are comparatively even smaller. In fact, they're so tiny on some species, they are vestigial, as in they are without a use physiologically, just like your tailbone. This, along with their short skull, gives abelosaurs their characteristic sausage-with-legs appearance. Now, to many of you, abelosaurs may still just seem like budget tyrannosaurs. However, the most unique aspect of abelosaurs, the things that truly make them special, can be observed in one of their most well-studied members, the Carnotaurus. Found in Argentina, Carnotaurus is a pretty exceptional creature. Most abelosaurs are known from scant materials. Meanwhile, Carnotaurus is known from a single, relatively complete fossil, which also included skin impressions. Carnotaurus's features are also very exaggerated, even for abelosaurs. Their skull is astoundingly short, nearly as long as it is tall. Their arms are also the tiniest of any abelosaur. 
Another feature is slightly more subtle. The Carnotaurus's caudal ribs, these bone protrusions on their tail, were structured to support massive muscles that helped with locomotion. These muscles would have allowed Carnotaurus to sprint and accelerate at a very high speed for a large animal. It's possible to think of Carnotaurus as a giant prehistoric cheetah, an animal who relies on short bursts of immense speed to chase down its prey. Now, there is a caveat. The Carnotaurus's giant locomotive muscles left very little room for muscles that allow it to turn quickly. So, to any time travelers currently being chased down by a Carnotaurus, just remember, turn suddenly and sharply and you'll have a good chance of survival. Now, the other more obvious trait you've probably noticed by now about Carnotaurus is their awesome devil horns. These brow horns are actually what give Carnotaurus its name, which means meat-eating bull, arguably the greatest genus name out there. And these horns actually had a purpose. Remember the display horns of Ceratosaurus? Well, these horns have obviously carried on to Carnotaurus and other abelosaurids. Some have one silly unicorn horn right on the top of their heads. Now, many theropods also have ornamentation on their skulls, but these probably served no practicality and were instead intended for display. But not abelosaurs, they mean business. Along with their horns, it is inferred a few species also had a cornified tough covering on top of their heads, as well as skulls and necks which could take stress. This implies abelosaurs possibly headbutted each other for anything from mates to territory. Now, the nature of these headbutting contests are somewhat up in the air. They may not have been true headbutting contests as much as they were head shoving, similar to the behavior marine iguanas exhibit, who also have bumpy heads. It could have been more akin to how giraffes will strike each other's flanks. Regardless, such behavior isn't seen in any other type of theropod, making abelosaurs one of a kind. But Carnotaurus isn't the only revolutionary abelosaur. Meet Majungasaurus. This abelosaur is one example of a dinosaur from the island of Madagascar, along with other dinosaurs, such as the odd Masiacosaurus and the herbivorous Repetosaurus. Of the island dinosaurs, it appears Majungasaurus was by far the apex predator, only rivaled by prehistoric crocodiles. Yet the confusing bite marks on their bones indicate there was something that hunted these abelosaurs, and it turned out these killers were actually other Majungasauruses. Yes, Majungasaurus is one of the few dinosaurs we have hard evidence for being cannibals. Of course, can you blame them? Prehistoric Madagascar was a tough place to live and abelosaurs are stone-cold survivalists, and if it takes eating their neighbor berry to continue, they'll do it. There's also evidence of abelosaurs being uniquely adapted to handle heat through their skin. Skin impressions show these animals may have had skin similar to reptiles and mammals who have to thermoregulate, such as elephants and their wrinkly, cracked hide. Now, as much as abelosaurs are rugged survivalists and possibly all brutal cannibals, they have probably looked fashionable doing it. A study shows Majungasaurus's arms aren't as useless as once thought. Scars on the bone reveal muscles were attached to these arms that would allow them to move around to a certain degree, specifically flap in and out. It is speculated the arms might have been used for a display, with bright feathers on the hands designed to flash a mate or attacker from the front in a confusing or attractive form of display. I should warn this is all about 100% speculation, but it does provide a pretty interesting and slightly hilarious image of abelosaurs. These two are by far the most famous of the abelosaurs, but there are many other species that have helped us learn more about these dinosaurs. In Argentina, once again, the well-preserved skeleton of Acryxonatosaurus was found dating back to 97 million years ago. Acryxonatosaurus is a large abelosaur, probably growing around 8 meters long, and what's odd about it is it shared its environment with the large predatory Carcharodontosaur, Giganotosaurus. This debunked a theory that until the extinction of the Carcharodontosaurs, abelosaurs lived in their shadow as smaller animals. But the evidence of these two large predators in the same time and place means that abelosaurs evolved and maybe competed with other large dinosaurs, although exactly how these two predators somehow coexist is still a mystery. Another interesting abelosaur is Rugops. This dinosaur was the first evidence that abelosaurs lived in Africa which it did about 95 million years ago. It gets its name Wrinkle Face from the grooves and impressions on its skull that would have been caused by large blood vessels on the bone's surface. These blood vessels might have supplied blood to an elaborate facial display or for bright skin coloring. Rugops was only 4.5 meters in length, 
and its weak bite force and teeth imply it was probably a meek scavenger. And of course, what talk about abelosaurids would be complete without the namesake animal, abelosaurus. Discovered in 1985, it is only known from one incomplete skull. Bony ridges on the skull might have supported keratin structures, and although it does have the short skull that denotes it as an abelosaur, it wasn't nearly as stubby as later ancestors. Although only known from a skull, it is from other more well-preserved species we are able to piece together the original abelosaur. So, those are the abelosaurs. They might at first look like discount copycat tyrannosaurs, but as more and more fossils get discovered, these creatures are becoming more appreciated by science. Bulldog-faced, head-butting, cannibalistic dinosaurs are not something you see every day, and hopefully these unique animals will get their time in the limelight. Hello and thanks for watching. I can't believe it has taken me this long to talk about abelosaurs, uh, one of the more interesting, if obscure, groups of dinosaurs. As always, thanks for the artwork and videos I used to make this, and thank you for watching. See ya!